Well, do you know you were created to be wild? Nate Johnston reveals what God is doing in this generation to awaken this bold, daring faith of his prophets and reformers. If you're enjoying Table Talk, be sure to like, comment, subscribe. Remember to click that notification bell to stay up to date on all of our latest posts. So what set David apart from the rest of the leaders of Israel? And how was Elijah able to boldly defy and challenge the pagan priest of Baal? And in the wilderness, how did a seemingly uncivilized baptizer become a boisterous voice declaring the arrival of the Messiah? It was their wild adoration and faith in the Lord. And today's guest is here to reveal how we can ignite that in our own lives. But before we get to that... Uh, joining me around the table is my beautiful daughter in love, Susanna Lamb. How are you? Hello. I'm so happy to be here. Thank you for having me. This book is called The Wild One. Woo! So I had to put you on the table for that. You know, it's funny. I actually you told him. Wild one. <laughs> I actually told him growing up, I felt like John the Baptist who like, loved five-star cuisine. Just a version. So it doesn't fit. All right. It. Anna Kendall, how are you? Well, I love the title of the book, so yeah. I'm really excited about that. And you always have the wildest colors. Yes. 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 There's true wild. Yes, we yes. Are. yes, and you are too. Yeah. Um, thank you. Yes. <laughs> hey, Dean, how are you? Hey, I'm good. I'm so excited to be here. We're with a wild group already oh, yes. this morning. We are. And another wild one at the table is my beautiful daughter, Rebecca. Hi. Hi. How are you? <laughs> I'm laughing at Susie's joke that she's drawn the Baptist minus the locust. <laughs> exactly. yeah. She's drawn the Baptist with flowers, chocolate cake. Chocolate. Yes. Chocolate That's locust. right. That's right. Oh, no. That voice calling in the wilderness. <laughs> Cindy Bernard, how are you? I'm good. Thank I think you. we have a wild table today. You do. Y'all yeah. yeah. like the two calm ones. Well, yes. I, you yeah. know what? <laughs> Y'all like we your were there. Age, I think we were wild. We were. Yes, we were. What we're, happened to us? We just got calmer. We're a more calm yes. wild. You're we, more wise. We, 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 a we, sophisticated wild. Yeah. Yes. But when, a when so we get together yes. by ourselves, yes. that's another thing. Okay, these ladies are excited today. Well, he is a prophetic voice with a passion empowering believers in this generation, and he's here to talk about his exciting book, The Wild Ones. Please welcome Nate Johnson. Welcome. Thank you so much for having me. Yeah. yeah. You know, every male that will take on all of this estrogen, <laughs> I have to say you're brave. To yes. 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 And his book doesn't help. <laughs> I have a house of girls, my old daughters. So See, there is a you're, you're right at home. He's a good right company. Right at home. Well, you know, throughout the Bible, there are men and women who stood up for truth, who defied social etiquette, that tried to silence him, and who loved God more than what was comfortable. We often feel inspired by them, but how do we tap into that same wild, daring faith? Well, Nate is here to help us answer the questions. And uh, the wild ones, the pioneer call of emerging voices from the wilderness to the front lines is really a message for this generation. Yes. I do believe they've seen and heard everything, and they really are hungry for truth yeah. and for Absolutely. courage mm -hmm. and to really assume the role that God has called them to. Do you believe that? Absolutely. There is such a hunger. And I think when you've watched like the movie, like Jesus Revolution, there was that line in there about they have a genuine hunger and they're seeking God, but they're finding him in all the wrong places. Yeah. And I think about this current generation that's yeah. rising up, all the areas that they're, that they're finding the wrong thing, it's actually showing that they're in pursuit of him, but they don't know it. Yeah. And so I, I recognize that, and that stood out to me in the movie. I'm like, we, we need to be the people that show them who they're, it was like we're directing them in the right path in the right place to find yeah. him instead of all the counterfeits. Yeah, you know, um, let's go back a little bit to your upbringing mm -hmm. because some of the things that you went through when you were younger, although difficult, really kind of shaped you Absolutely. for the future. And God always takes those difficult moments and uses them in our life. And that's, that, that, yeah. that message doesn't preach so well sometimes, but it's absolutely the truth. Yeah, yeah it's that unpopular uh, message that sometimes in order to do big things for God, you go through these difficult circumstances. And I think my upbringing was definitely 
Um, a good example of that, I was born into a Christian home, you know, by outward appearances, it was great. I had a mum that loved God. I remember watching her worship God and yeah. I, I, I was like, wow, like we can have a relationship with God like that, I want that. But there was a lot of other things that happened. There was quite a dysfunctional place, abusive place. And, um, <clears throat> and she ended up uh, going through a divorce, I guess? Yeah, my dad left when I was four. And then your, your stepfather? Yeah, it was, it was, he was someone who, who uh, he loved God, but he had a lot of his own things going on, father wounds, and so that, of course, then passed on to me. So my view of God was through the lens of how he fathered mm, me. Right. So I looked at God like he was this evil taskmaster trying to always trip me up, and it, that was my view of God, and then it, I had to discover him for myself. And uh, that was... How did you do that? How did you get there? Yeah, I went through some rough years in my teens. I was quite demonised. I was this worshipping kid. I was creative. I, I, I just didn't fit the box of the normal church kind of thing. I it was normal. I was very, very much in bondage. Very much. I could be writing songs and feel like evil presence around me. And it was that worshipper in me, but it was misdirected. It was yeah. going the wrong place. You yeah. Know? And you would. Um, when did the turnaround happen? Like where God really yeah. touched you and you surrendered to the call of God on your life. When I was about 18 years old, I'd already been doing worship in the church at the same time, by the way, and uh, I woke up one morning at about 4 a.m., something choking me. I never told this story, it's not in the book, but something was choking me and I knew it was the enemy trying to kill me. And um, I walked out, all I knew was I was, no, there's no air going on, and I walked out the back and I passed out. I went to work that morning and my friend's mom called me and she was this crazy, I thought she was a nutty Christian, really. <laughs> and she called me at work and she said, what happened at 4 a.m. this morning? Aww. Tears, like crying. And I said, what do you mean? She said, Holy Spirit said, get up and pray for that yeah. boy. Wow. This is life and death. Wow. And I told her, and I'm like a bawling mess on the other end of the phone. She said, get your heart with the Lord, Nate. I went home, opened up my Bible, it was dusty, got off the shelf, Jeremiah 29, 11, it came out. Wow. For I know the thoughts and plans towards my you. My favorite scripture. Plans to prosper you and to harm you. And it just shifted everything. Well, you know, I was thinking, Rebecca, as he was telling that story, I can remember kind of when you were making your turn towards surrender in God and um there, you you had some of those same demonic attacks, like what he's talking about. Do you remember? Yeah, really? I, yeah, I had wow. the choking and stuff too. I didn't get choked to the point of being passed out, though. That's wow. intense. Yep. I was I was gonna have you speak to that, but no, I did go. There was pushback when I was coming into the kingdom, right? Because, because the see, devil wow. didn't want, just yeah. like he didn't want you to come into the kingdom. Right. So, At the beginning of things, when when things are being birthed, I, when, I don't know who said this, but someone someone who came through said that a lot of times when things are at its worst, yeah. Yeah. it's like the demons know the breakthrough is about yeah. to happen, yep. yes. and so that's why they attack because it's like the last attempt to get yep. you out. Yeah, that's, that's so good. So you, you know, got your heart right. Where did the demons yeah. go? <laughs> no, okay. So I I knew that something was delivered that day. Like just yeah. reading that, I said, Jesus, give, give you my yes. Never once saw another demonic thing in my room really? ever again in that one moment. But I still had like issues of like nightmares, and I still was like bombarded with fear, unforgiveness plagued my life. So it was a process. Wow. It was a process. It was a long process. But everything that you went through, every step was God was there. Yeah, teaching you. And you would take all of that and use it to help people today. And yeah. mm -hmm. I know one of the dreams that you had in the book that I really believe that people can relate to today. And, and again, if you're that person watching and you, you have experienced what you felt like was an attack from the enemy, um, just know that God is greater, number yeah. one, and that the Word of God is powerful and that God has a specific plan and purpose. And just like they were talking about, sometimes right before there's a breakthrough, you will have an onslaught of an attack like that because on the other side of it, um, God's gonna do something really great in your life. So be encouraged today and don't give up and don't falter, don't fall away. That's what the enemy wants you to do. Don't faint, okay? Don't faint. So, okay, so you had a dream about a classroom mm -hmm. and I think, that I know they would be interested to hear yeah. about that. I know, I perked my head up. <laughs> yeah, yeah, okay. If she's perked her head up, that means it's interesting. So go ahead. <laughs> yeah, so this class, uh, in this dream, it was uh, the middle of 2020, and um, in this dream, I'm teaching at the front of a class, and it was a lot of Gen Z, it was a few other ages, but I knew it was the Lord really high highlighting that generation. And the first boy, um, he was there, and I could tell he was demonized. And I look at him and I could tell it was progressive Christianity. And he yells it out. He's like, I'm progressive Christianity and I'm here to stay. What, which means? 
it's Christianity that veers away from the Bible. It's it's making Woke. it's the me yeah. it's the me Bible. Mm. You know, it's the me Christianity. Right. Yeah. Make it what I want. Put it around my only life. The, only, Evolution only, Christianity. We're evolving we to adapt things <laughs> and try to make it. Fit or they into take our out words and just say just the words. Yeah, of yeah Jesus. it's like apostate. Yes. Yeah. yes. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Apostate. Yeah, it's apostasy. Sure. Yep. It's a false Christianity. Yeah. But they will they will say they're Christian. Exactly. In their mind, it's de it's deception. They think they are. They think yeah. they are. But That's they've it. taken from the word of and God. And so, what did the Lord say to you? Well, in the dream, I knew I had to go up and just lay hands on him. And he, get, he got delivered. He fell on the floor. He was getting delivered of this. It, it really spoke to me that I needed to approach them in love because they don't, you know, but at the same time, not negating that this is a spiritual fight that we need yeah. to deal with yes. spiritually. We yes. can't love this thing. We love the person because we don't uh, wrestle flesh and blood. Mm -hmm. Amen. We, we, do we deal with the giants? We have to. What other things did you see in the room other than um, the... From memory, so I, I remember there being, um, not sure if it was like woke Christianity because that's the same thing, but I remember there being just like, uh, oh, false justice movements, which at the time there were many going around. Mm -hmm. And it was, it's the illusion of God's restoration and justice, but it was the hijack of true justice. Okay. Wow. And it was like, you know, it's where we've been seeing this clickbait and, and this kind of virtue signaling mm -hmm. over the years. We have to get behind that. Actually, is that true? Does that come from the Lord's heart? Or is that something that's jumping in as a hijack mm -hmm. that actually doesn't end in reconciliation, Which restoration? is what we're seeing. We're seeing that. Yeah. You know, it's like, oh, it, we're seeing, well, it's okay. It's justice to let people uh, break into uh, stores and steal because they have a need. So it, that's the false hijacking of justice yeah. and um, all the different rioting and things that are happening. Yeah, like how does... it's okay. Exactly. Like how does more division create reconciliation and healing? It doesn't happen. Mm -hmm. So we need to know and discern the difference between the two. And I think that was just God saying, hey, heads up, next yeah. few years, yeah. there's going to be a lot of this. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What would you say to people who are saying, but this is my truth? <laughs> this is my truth right now what's because happening. that has come up so much and you have Christians that are adopting this whole theology and this whole idea, but this is my truth. Like, no, 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 there's one truth, one. What would you say to well, those Christians mind, who are my trying truth to... Is gonna end, you're not going to end up in a good place if you follow my truth right. and yeah. not his the, truth. The need for yeah. righteousness over rightness. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Well, even at its very, at its very core, a Christian life is you die. It's not about you, sorry. Exactly. It's not about you. You, you co-died with Christ. You yeah. could be co-resurrected as something else. I'm sorry, my, my truth, you, you had nothing to do with this. This is your life in Christ now. Mm -hmm. So my truth, it's ridiculous. Your book says it's a prophetic survival yeah. guide. Yeah. Explain that and what would be in the book that giving the survival guide. Uh, throughout the book, I, you notice I like bullet points. I love, ex I love giving language to the things I didn't have language for. Uh, I feel like I went through the, hard, the school of hard knocks and neology. I was just, didn't know how to walk through, even in ministry. Like when we went in ministry, I thought doing life before ministry was hard. It's like getting into ministry and, and trying to figure out how to be a prophetic voice uh, and people are shutting you down and you're like, you know, am I a rebel or am I a reformer? And all the different stuff you're trying to navigate. How do you love the church while also being a voice that changes the church, you know? Yeah. Yeah. So I wrote this as the guide that I wish I had <laughs> because, you know, right. like there's people exactly. out there who don't know and so they're going, they're on the fridge of the church right now and they don't know when they're meant to fit. I'm saying, hey, you fit, you just don't know it. I know you said you were writing another book and it's like the Lord said, this is the wrong book. And you started this one and you said it was almost like the Holy Spirit yeah. wrote it. Wow. Like it came oh, so quickly cool. and so oh, fast God. and it Six was weeks. like God speaking oh, wow. through you in a <laughs> oh, way that you'd never experienced before. Yeah, I said to my publisher, we need to cancel the contract. This is what, I, what is in my heart to write isn't within the, you know, the bounds of what you guys do. And they jumped on board. They said, write it. They said, but you got six weeks to do it. Wow. And wow. Avery, a little two-year-old, she, she's two-year-old now. She was only a few months old. And she, she would go to my wife to feed, but then she'd love naps on me. So I would literally be writing on my phone Aww. and Holy Spirit would just, wow. and I would sit there a blubbering mess like I wasn't even writing the book. It was all him. Oh, yeah. Now when I read this book, I can't even read a chapter. I'll cry because it's not me. It's all him. And I go, oh, that's what I want. Oh, that you is. know, that's, so that's cool. That's, that's so cool. good. That's so cool. I was going to ask, you talk about a new wine or a crossover season. How do we know we're in one? Because there's tension right now. Mm -hmm. There's mess right now. Proverbs 14. It feels 4. so much more than tension, though. 
It's it's mess. Yeah, Proverbs yes. fourteen four yeah, says yes. increase comes by the strength of an ox, but without that we don't get any increase. So it's true. We're looking at mess. If we look at it through a prophetic lens, we diagnose mess and tension differently. We're like, whoa, we're moving to something good. That's like right. we've been stuck. Yeah. So this mess is actually an opportunity to embrace what God's doing or get stuck in something old and wonder why things aren't working anymore. In fact, really, I look at my life and even in ministry, God's been like, hey, that's not working anymore. Cut that out. Mm, and yeah. you might even recognize that here, there's things God's like, hey, I want you to move in this new direction. Right. And that just requires change. Globally, we're seeing that new wineskin has burst where just people aren't interested in this reheated up religious meals every more. They want something fresh from the Lord. Yeah. Yeah. And that takes a bold people who simply so follow the Lord. That's so true. That Susie? So then that's where the wild ones come in. So can you tell yeah. us what is what does it mean to be a wild one? Is it free in Christ or is it radical? What is it? Uh, I'd say it's like this, untainted and undefiled by religion. Mm. It's people that would, that would be completely untethered from the, all the holds and the binds that the enemy would try to place upon them that would hold them back. It's like David who would worship that ark back to Jerusalem right. and indigni- un- more undignified. Mm-hmm. He couldn't have done that he would have walked that in like it was a ceremony yeah. instead of a worship. Mm. Right, or the religious Pharisees, right. you know, in the New Testament. I mean, if, if Jesus ever got angry at anyone, it was those people. Yeah. Religious. It's not the lost people. It's the religious the people yep. that so will, you know, judge yes. and armchair quarterback, and they're not doing anything for the kingdom of God, but they exactly. want to judge you. Those, he had the most problems with those individuals and that kind of comfortable Christianity like you're talking about. But how does that happen to people? That's, I struggle. I struggle understanding people who have such an amazing encounter with God. They see his faithfulness in life over and over again and they're wild for him, right? And then all of a sudden that just goes away and that fades away. Now they're just kind of sitting back, chilling. How how do you get to that point? Um, There's this, on Iron Man 2 or 3, I think it was, uh, I, movies speak to me, I'm not sure if they do to you, but yes. mm-hmm. there's this phrase I think Peppa Potts says on there, she's like, <laughs> you start off with something pure, yeah, yes, you know, and then one day you look and you're far away from the shore, you know, and mm-hmm. I, I think as humans, we naturally, we start off with a fiery encounter with God, yeah. and it's only in keeping daily, you know, relationship with Him that we stay there. Yes. And look, I can look at my life and I'll be really honest. Like there are times where like, I'm like, oh, I'm far from, I'm like, I've drifted a bit. Like I need that back. Yes. And we need to tend to that. We just, you, know, you have to steward it. Yeah. And I think idolatry, I think being too comfortable. Yes. I think starting to disobey when God is telling you something. And so his voice becomes more and more distant. It's good. Familiar and I also too. think, yeah. you know, what you were saying to answer that question is that um, in the church, we have so much unforgiveness. People oh, wow. who think they have forgiven, but they really haven't. Yeah. Yeah. And it just, it closes the doors. It, it shuts the windows of heaven, the blessing yeah. of God in our life. And there's a lot of Christians. You, It becomes a, an attitude of entitlement instead of yeah. gratitude wow. exactly. and thankfulness. Yes. And like, so what? we wow. just did the forgiveness show on the table and I got so many mm-hmm. amazing emails from people um, saying, wow, you know, I've been a Christian all these years, but some of the things you talked about really touched my heart. So let's talk about your father wound and okay and you how did you work through that because I mean here you are you love God you're doing all these amazing things but it was there it was present yeah and sometimes the people who have the most knowledge of the word of God and are you know spiritual spiritually minded they can have that and not even realize it's there I think unforgiveness is definitely one of the biggest stumbling blocks if you're in ministry um in my early 20s uh one day the Lord, I was beginning to hear the Lord. And uh, he said to me, if you don't forgive your stepfather, it's gonna be really difficult to step into everything I've called you to. And I was like, well, how do I deal with that? And very clearly he said to me, this May, your family are gonna have a family event. I had not spoken to them. In May, they're gonna have a family event, invite you to it. I want you to forgive your dad right there, your stepfather there. If you do, I'll remove that once and for all, that particular sting, gone. I didn't believe him, but I, I just wanted to be angry, bitter. My brother and I used to talk about that. That, that, Our relationship was built on how hard done by we were. It was just this victim mentality. May shows up. I go to this event. I go to this family thing. I'm sitting outside and my my stepfather's there. Everyone leaves the table. It's just me and him. Mm. Awkward. (laughs) He begins telling me about his his father and and 
and I'm hearing it, I start to have compassion towards yeah. him because it was brutal, yeah. way worse than what I had by, you know, from oh, him. Wow. Out of nowhere, I said, I forgive you. And he went, what? And I said, I forgive you. He starts to get teary. I could tell he would, something had happened. He was mellow. And I'm like, what's going on? Why is he not angry? And he said, can I come in your mom pray with you? We've been going through some counselling and um, maybe the Holy Spirit can show you where all this hurt in your life is coming from. So we walked down to the pontoon of my auntie's property and they said, will you pray and ask Holy Spirit to show you where all the hurt, abandonment, all the, all the things entered in your life. I remember thinking from you, mate, when, you were seven, when I was seven years old. I instantly went into a vision, the clearest vision of my life, wow. where I felt like I was there. I was four years old, mm. and it was the day my dad left. Yeah. I see the, the wallpaper on the walls, very 80s, <laughs> the couch. I look over, and my mum is screaming into a cushion on the couch. I rush out the front porch, and my dad's leaving in his work truck. And he looks up at me, he said, I'm sorry, I have to go, I have to go. And I said, don't go. I rush back inside, I run down the hallway, I run under my bed, I, I, it's clear as day. I see the Donald Duck bedspread and you know curtains my mum had sewn for me. I run under the bed and I'm just sitting there as a four-year-old feeling all of the things that a four-year-old should not feel. Right. This is my fault. Yeah. Um, you know, nobody loves me. Right. But then I feel someone next to me and I look up and there's Jesus sitting there and he's got his hands over his face, and he's crying with me. Mm. Looking up and seeing that shifted everything for me because I didn't realise that the root of my unforgiveness was actually deeper than my stepfather. I was mad at God. Mm. Yeah. You abandoned me. You left me back there. Mm. Why would you do that? I've been through hell in my childhood, silently not knowing how to deal with it. But in that moment, I realised that it wasn't Jesus that had done that to me. It was easy then for me to extend that forgiveness to my stepfather yeah. and leave it behind. And I walked out that day a changed person wow. in that area. That is amazing. And here God used you to minister to him. Yeah. Yes. I think about the takeaway from that. There are people watching that you can relate to what we're talking about. As we, he was talking about it, you thought about someone in your life that you thought you had forgiven, but you haven't. And God is saying, I want to heal that and I want to do something really amazing mm. in your heart if you'll allow me to do so. There are doors that have been closed in your life. There have been things going on in your life that were difficult. There have been things that have happened that you don't understand why some of these doors have closed. And the Lord is saying, I need you to forgive. Mm. And uh, when you forgive and understand what I've forgiven you, it's going to be much more simpler to do that. But if would you just look and just minister as you feel led and, yeah, and talk to those absolutely. individuals that are watching. You know, today is a brand new day for you. It's time to leave those stumbling blocks of resistance, those offences, those hurts that have just been blanketing you and, and stopping you from stepping into the... I feel like there are people on here, you're just unhappy. You just don't know what it is to feel like joy in this Christian life. It's because the unforgiveness and bitterness has just been shrouding your life. And the Lord today is saying it's time to let that person go. Will you, will you give that to me? It may feel like it's an unjust situation that hasn't had any answers yet. It hasn't, it hasn't resolved. That person hasn't said sorry. They don't know how much what they did hurt to you, hurt you. Or maybe you're just mad at God. God, you abandoned me. God, why did you do this? And, why did you, and today, he, the Lord wants to heal those wounds. He wants to set you free. He wants you to know that there's a life. There's, there's, there's a whole new journey and path for you beyond the hurt and the unforgiveness you've been living in. Will you pray with me? Say, Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. I release that person. I release that person. All the pain. All the pain. All the, pain. All the wounds they inflicted. All the wounds they inflicted. Set me free. Set me free. Father. Father. Shepherd me. Shepherd me. Through my heart season. Through my heart season. In the process of what I've been carrying. In the process of what I've been carrying. And let a brand new day begin. Let a brand new day begin. In Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. 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 The Lord is setting you free today. It's going to be a brand new song that's going to come out of you. I believe that. Amen. After that, I want to hear the rest of the story. Were you able to talk to your brother? My brother, unfortunately, he thought, well, there's an interesting thing with happened with that. He thought I was a liar. He thought that I was faking it. He thought, you know, that there was... Um, 
that I was just trying to do some Christian band-aiding. And um, two years later, he kind of ignored me for a while. Two years later, he called me. Um, I was at work. I was working for a ministry at the time. I sent him the, to, the lyrics to the song, the Hill song, A Thousand Times of Fails Till Your Mercy Remains. He texted me, said, can you pick me up from the train station tonight? I said, sure. I went and picked him up. He was silent in the car. I hadn't seen him in a year. And he said, do you want to know what I was doing this morning when you texted me those lyrics? And I said, what? He says, I was down in the toilets. Um, he worked in the city at the time. And he goes, I was popping pills and writing you a note. I was about to end my life. Mm. He looked at me and he angrily said, how did you forgive him? Wow. I said, I just had to let him go. I couldn't let him plague my life anymore. I couldn't let that spirit. Yeah. I said, do you want to... Do you want to do the same? He said, I have to. He handed me the note. And I said, I don't want to see it. I screwed it up, threw it in the trash. Yeah. You know, I don't want to see that thing. It's a new day for you. And I led him to Jesus. You oh, forgave him. That is awesome. wonderful. Yeah. Wow. That is wonderful. Oh, okay, so we're out of time. But again, your book, The Wild Ones, and you mentioned David as being one of the wild ones. And God is calling people who are watching right now yes. to be wild ones. What is that? It means, it means someone who's completely 100% sold out to Jesus. It just means when he says to do something that you do it, even if it's unconventional, unpopular. It means that you follow the, the tugging on your heart to move in something fresh that he's doing in the earth right now. It means being a voice of truth when he asks you to be a voice of truth. I, I truly believe that there's something parallel with the story of David that is right now upon this generation. That's called to break away from a lot of the just the, the cliche, a the lot of the, the areas that are stagnant in the church and truly step into the, the permission of the Father to worship. It's like the ark, you know, worshiping, our, worship, worshiping and dancing our way into its rightful place. It's like a generation who follow the permission of the Father above yeah. any other blueprint or form yeah. that's been given. I know that is, that is the cry of my heart and those at the table that we would follow the voice yeah. of the Father. We are out of time. And uh, <clears throat> I know you feel the Lord stirring up that wild boldness and faith in you today. And I encourage you to open your heart to what God wants to do in and through you today. I'm telling you, you may feel insignificant, but you shouldn't. That is the enemy lying to you. God has a specific purpose and awakening that he wants to, to, to do in your life that he can use you to help transform this generation. If you feel the Lord stirring your heart today, Maybe you'd just like for someone to pray with you. That's why that toll-free number's on the screen. We would love to pray with you today, encourage you, and just help you to know that there is big kingdom purpose in your life. And I do believe he's going to do something really powerful and amazing in your life. I want to thank Nate for joining us at the table. Be sure to pick up a copy of his book, The Wild Ones. It's available now. And for more on his ministry, you can visit him online at nateandchristy.co. And let us know how today's Table Talk has touched your life and again, call that number if you need prayer. Leave us a comment on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, or YouTube. And we want to hear what God is doing in your life. I especially love to hear from people weeks later when they have really gone before the Lord and God has begun to show them things mm -hmm. that line up with the Word of God that He has prepared for them for their life. And then doors begin to open. And again, that forgiveness part is such an important key. And just I pray that you would just release those individuals that have hurt you and uh, and just say, God, you don't have to understand it, but just say, Lord, I'm willing. I may not feel it, but I want to be clean. I want my heart to be pure because I want to be used by you. Thank you so much for watching today. Thank you, Nate, for joining us. Thank you, ladies. Uh, continue to call the day and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye for today.